We're glad you've chosen to listen to our weekly talkback. The weekly talkback is designed to take a portion of the teaching from this week to a deeper level. You may want to listen to this week's teaching, but it isn't necessary to understand the weekly talkback. If you'd like to connect further, feel free to reach out to us through our website, kanoichurch.org. For now, enjoy the weekly talkback from Kanoi Church, where our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. This is going to be the same intro for all of the upcoming weekly devotional videos. Uh, in January of 2022, we did a question and answer Sunday, and you guys submitted so many questions, there was no way that I could possibly answer them all in a Sunday service. So what we decided to do instead was answer as many as I could in that Sunday service and take the rest and make them weekly devotionals. So what you are about to see is a question submitted by members of the congregation for question and answer Sunday, but we're going to be answering these over an extended period of time. So I hope that you enjoy this weekly devotional. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. And if you have any questions about Kanoi Brethren in Christ Church, if you want to get involved in some way, shape, or form, feel free to check out our website, kanoichurch.org, or email me at nick at kanoi.org. Have a great day. Good morning. And, uh, Glad we're going to have this time together, and we are continuing to answer the massive amount of questions that we received for the question and answer Sunday that we had back in January. Today, our question comes from our online community, and the question's fairly simple. It says this, we live in a country that has an abundance of everything. I feel like there are so many warnings in the Bible about keeping earthly treasures. What are some ways we can live to ensure that we care more about godly treasure than earthly treasure? And uh, I think that's a really good question. It's something that I personally think about quite often. I know my wife thinks about it a ton. Um, the, the passage is being quoted here. Uh, you know, the, the, the author of the question says, there are warnings in the Bible about keeping earthly treasures. And so before we jump into some things we can do to live more for heaven than for earth, um, let's talk about the passage of scripture. The passage is coming from Matthew chapter 6, and if you can remember, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 are the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is arguably the most famous sermon that Jesus ever gave. Um, scholars are in disagreement whether it was truly one singular sermon that Jesus was on a mountainside or if you look at the Gospel of Luke, it was a flat area, a low-lying area. Uh, but regardless, was it one sermon that Jesus gave, this very long oration? Or is this kind of a compilation of the best hits? Because one of the things we know is that the Gospels are written down years and years after Jesus went back to heaven. And so as the disciples turned apostles, look back on their time with Jesus and remember what was said uh, were they kind of taking the teachings that Jesus did regularly and putting them together? Or, or was this really one big sermon? Um, regardless of whether it was one big sermon or it was a bunch of Christ's teachings pushed together, um, we can be assured that these are Christ's teachings. Um, and, and in some ways, I feel like it's almost more powerful. If this is a best of, then we would be being made aware that for instance, Matthew is saying, this is something that Jesus said on the regular. He said this over and over. He repeated this. This is something that every time we went to a village, every time we went to a new town, every time we stood in front of a new people group or uh, a new crowd gathered, Jesus talked about these things. And so in some ways, I think it almost gives it more weight because it might have been the thing that Jesus repeated. But if you look at Matthew chapter 6, uh, the passage is being quoted is Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. That's where it starts. But if you would just start at Matthew chapter 6, verse 1, there are a couple of things that you're going to notice. Um, first, depending on the Bible you have, it might be divided up into sections, and the sections have titles. Remember, the title sections are not scripture. Uh, those are put in by whoever has um, manufactured the Bible to help 
you be able to find the place you're looking for easier. So it's a tool, but it's not scripture. But the one that I'm looking at this morning says the first section is giving to the needy, then it's prayer, then it's fasting, then it's treasure in heaven. Okay. Uh, so if I look at the very first section, giving to the needy, the very first verse says, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, don't announce it with trumpets. Okay. So the very first prohibition is saying, when you give to others, do not sing your own praises from the mountaintops because whatever reward or response you get here on earth, that is your reward. Because God has a reward for you, but if you go around touting all that you've done, then you're collecting your reward here and now. You're not getting your heavenly reward, right? So, so when we give to the needy, when we give to those who are in need, we do it quietly and we do it um, in a way that honors God. Now, the next section is prayer. It starts at verse 5, and it says, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand uh, to, to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. It's a very similar prohibition to the giving prohibition. When you pray, the purpose of your prayer is not to gain attention for you. The purpose of your prayer is not to uh, have people be saying, oh, that person has, they're just so good with words and um, they're just an amazing prayer. I, I wish I could be as good as they are. Um, the, the purpose is not for people to look at you and say, oh, look how holy they are. There they are praying again. Um, the, the whole purpose of like in this passage, verse five, it says they pray in the street corners to be seen by others. And so they're not on the street corners praying for the people walking by, for the people who are sitting on the street, for the vendors who might be around. They are praying there to be seen by others. That is <clears throat> their intention. Uh, and so Jesus warns against that as their intention. He said, don't be like them. Then he gives us the Lord's Prayer. And then if you go to the next section, it's on fasting. Verse 16, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces to show that others are show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Again, this is our third prohibition in a row. They're all almost identical. Don't draw attention to yourself. If you are doing something, a spiritual practice of some kind, that is meant to draw you closer to God, that is meant for you to give something up here on earth for something greater in heaven, don't draw attention to yourself. Because... When you draw attention to yourself and other people go, oh my, that person's amazing. You've just gotten your reward. Okay. Um, and, and I think when we talk about treasures in heaven, we can't just look at the one little passage and the one little verse that says, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth. I think we have to look at this whole passage and indeed this whole sermon to get an idea as to what God is actually, or what Jesus is saying, what God's saying through Jesus to us about these things. So, we started out with how we give to the needy, then we started out with prayer, then we went to fasting. All three of these have strict prohibitions telling us, don't do these things publicly, don't do these things to be seen, uh, because if you do them to be seen, you're getting your reward right here. You're getting your treasure right here. And then Jesus moves into this treasures in heaven passage. So verse 19 says this, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, if we're looking at this as sort of a, <clears throat> a philosophical argument, um, we might say that the entire argument to not store up for yourself treasures on earth uh, is based upon what Jesus says in verse 21. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That is the basis of this argument. Jesus truly believes that wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is at. And if we look back over these past three prohibitions, giving to the needy, uh, praying, and fasting, what he's saying is when you disfigure your face because you're fasting, so the rest of the world knows that you're fasting, when you go to the street corners and you pray loudly, not for the people that are there, but for yourself to gain attention, when you give to the needy, not to actually help them out, but so that you get accolades and praises from other people, you are showing God that your heart is wrapped up in you, okay? 
When you do those things in secret and nobody knows that you're doing those things, your heart is in the right place. Jesus here is saying, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. And so it's sort of this, it's two-way street. You can look at somebody's life and go, ugh, hold on, let me, let me re-say that. God can look at somebody's life and say, I can tell by their actions that their heart is not in the right place, right? And that's what he's saying with these three prohibitions. Depending on how you pray, depending on how you fast, depending on how you give to those who are in need, God can look at your life and go, heart's not in the right place. But Jesus is going one step further then, and he says, look, I don't just want to be able to look back on things and say your heart's not in the right place. I want you to be proactive in this. So get your heart in the right place, and that is going to help you out immensely in everything else. And how do we do that? How do we keep our heart in the right place? Well, we, we focus on the right kind of treasure. Um, the interesting thing here is that Jesus is not saying, I don't want you to have treasure. <laughs> and boy, that sounds weird even coming out of my mouth. It's, this is not a prosperity gospel sort of thing. <laughs> but, but listen, he says, don't store up for yourselves treasure on earth. And then he says, store up for yourself treasures in heaven. It's not a prohibition on storing up treasure. He wants you to store up the right treasure. He wants your heart to be in the right place. If you store up for yourself treasures in heaven, it shows that your heart is right here. And Jesus is convinced that wherever your treasure is, there your heart will be. And what does Jesus want more than anything else? He wants your heart, right? So what we need to do is focus on heavenly things rather than earthly things. And so as this question has been asked, and and, and as the I hope the questioner is, is wondering, all right, Let's let's just accept Jesus' premises. Let's accept his argument that where my treasure is, there my heart will be. What are some ways I can live to ensure that we care more about godly treasure than earthly treasure? Um, all right. So this is a good thing. Uh, this is, I think, a helpful thing. The, the brethren in Christ have 10 core values. And right now we're doing a membership class at church, and we have uh, like 10 people that are there learning about these core values right now. But one of the core values that learn about eventually is called living simply. And uh, and I have the, the book right here called Focusing Our Faith. And this is a book that was put out about each of the 10 core values. The Brethren of Christ is currently in the midst of, of looking how they can kind of restate those values. Uh, this particular chapter on Living Simply was written by a wonderful woman named Esther Spurrier, who is still a part of the Brethren of Christ Church today, and uh, who served faithfully in Zambia with her husband, who was a doctor, uh, and just did fantastic and phenomenal missions work during that time. Now, this this core value of the Brethren of Christ says we value uncluttered lives, which free us to love boldly, give generously, and serve joyfully. And I read that to you because I think those are the ways that we can make sure that we're focused more on godly treasure than earthly treasure. We love boldly, we give generously, and we serve joyfully. Now, I have a sneaking suspicion that the person who asked the question and, and anybody else who even resonated with the question is thinking to themselves, all right, I can love, right? Um, I, I can definitely love and I can definitely serve. I have no problem with that. But as I look around and as I even think about my own life, I find myself chasing that almighty dollar and that the, the end of the day, the paycheck. How do I make sure that I'm not focused too much on those things? And the best way that I can say that we can be focused on the right thing is by giving generously. That's the piece of, of this particular core value, I think, that is really applicable to the question being asked of us today. Give generously. You see, when I have money, uh, when I have dollar bills, and they're the most important thing to me, I don't want to be separated from them. I'll protect them at all costs. I'll try to add to them if I can. But if I can look at those dollar bills not as mine, but as God's. God has given those things to me to steward, right? They're, they're not truly mine. They're just given to me to use until the master returns. And, and if you kind of sense my drift here, there's a, there's a beautiful parable that Jesus tells about this very thing called the parable of the talents. I'm not going to tell it. You can go look it up if you are curious. But essentially, we're stewards of this treasure that's been given to us by somebody else. The dollars aren't my dollars. The dollars are God's dollars, and I get to I get the privilege of being able to steward those things. And some of those things I'm going to use on my family, right? We've got, we need food. 
Uh, we've got some foster kiddos right now who need some diapers and uh, some other things. And, and some of those dollars I'm going to use to help somebody that it, God's going to bring across my path. Um, it, you know, somebody that needs a, a meal or a cup of coffee or help with an electric bill, right? Some of those dollars I'm going to use to give to the church because I trust the church and believe the church is the bride of Christ. And as the bride of Christ in this world, it's got a particular mission to accomplish. And so I, I bless the church with some of those dollars. And, and so I become a steward of these things that have been given to me by God rather than looking at them as mine. And because I don't look at them as mine, my heart is not caught up in the dollars themselves. My heart is caught up in being the very best steward I can for God. Now, that is the way I think that's most helpful for us to look at it. And, and if we are curious how much I'm tied up in the dollars versus how much I'm tied up in being good steward, I think we don't have to look any further than looking at how much we give. Because how much we give and how much we keep, how much we uh, generously bless others versus how much we generously bless ourselves is going to be a telltale sign of, of where our heart is at. Um, I have a friend who, uh, when we were we were in California together for a conference, and he came across a woman who was living in her car with uh, with four kids, and she she was stuck. I mean, she had no gas in the car, so where it was parked is where it was parked. She couldn't move. She couldn't go anywhere. She had some plans. She had some things in place, but she couldn't even she couldn't get there because she had no gas. And 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 through sitting down and talking with her and getting her some food and, and sitting with the kids, my friend felt like God had called him to just give to this woman. And so he went to the ATM and he got every dollar out of his account and he blessed her um, with that money. And you might think, well, that's, that's irresponsible. I, I disagree. I think it's unbelievably generous. I think it's, it's an example. Does he do that every time? No, but he was listening to God's prompting in that moment, and he felt like God prompted him to give everything he had to the point that he didn't have enough money for a plane ticket home, and so he had to get some help to get a plane ticket. But that's the sort of generosity that God might call us to. And and as I look at him, uh, I go, oh my word, he is not tied to his dollars. I wonder about myself. If I was in that situation, if I had been the one to meet this woman and sit down and talk with her, and I felt like God was prompting me, to bless her that much, would I have been able to do that? And I don't know. But I hope that if the day ever comes, I'll be able to respond in a way that shows that my treasure is not here, but my treasure is in heaven. Esther Spurrier writes something else in this book uh, that's always stuck out to me, that's always a good reminder to me. She says in this book that God blesses us not so that we can be a dam in the river of blessing, but that God blesses us so that we may let the blessings freely flow to all those who are downstream from us. So all those who we meet. And that doesn't just mean financially. Hear me, okay? It doesn't just mean financially. There's so many ways that you can bless other people. And not all of us have finances to be able to do the sort of financial blessing that we're talking about. But we all have the ability to bless. The reason I'm talking so much about finances is because this question is specifically tied up in treasures on earth versus treasures in heaven. Um, oh, lastly, I'll say this. This is a quote by Richard Foster. And he says, when we focus on God, we will embrace certain truths that our stuff has been given to us by God, that it is not ours to hold on to, and that it is intended for the good of the larger community. That perspective results in simplicity. This is not an easy question to answer, and it certainly is an even harder answer to live out. Nobody gets this perfectly right all the time. I certainly don't. I, this is a part of the struggle that we all have. We live, we have been so blessed to live in a culture and a country that has been so blessed. It becomes very easy to forget how many others there are out there who are not blessed. The thing that we have to pay attention to is looking for the ways that we can kind of catch a litmus test of our lives to say, yeah, because of this, I can tell where my heart's at. And then we'll live our lives a little bit. And we'll, we'll play out those practices. And then we got to check in again. And we got to go, okay, oh, actually my heart's been tied up in this too much. I need to make some changes. And, and we got to keep working our fear, our, our faith out. 
uh, that way. And this is where having community becomes an essential part of the Christian walk because one of the easiest litmus tests that we can put into our lives to see where our treasure is at and if we're following in Jesus' footsteps is having people surrounding us that are willing to say, hey, I, I think you're off track here a little bit, or having people in our lives who we are comfortable and uh, and who know us well enough that we can go to them and say, hey, I'm struggling with treasures in heaven, treasure on earth. I'm working through that right now. I'd like your perspective of me and my life. Uh, do I have treasures on earth or do I have treasure in heaven? How am I doing there? And And so we need people like that who can surround us, who know us, who can speak into our lives that way. But again, this is something that we continue to work out over time, trying our very best to honor God and remember that God blesses us, not so that we can keep it and hoard it just for ourselves, but that God blesses us to bless others. So as you look at your own life and you you consider the question that's been asked of us today, how do we make sure that we are putting our faith and putting our our hope and, and, and putting our heart in the treasures in heaven rather than treasures on earth? Ask yourself the question, Am I able to give generously? Am I able to give joyfully right now? Am I blessing others or am I blessing myself? Hard questions, but questions worth asking. So I hope that you have a, a wonderful day. And as always, put your questions in the chat. Um, put comments in the chat here. If there's something that I didn't quite answer or you have a point to make, make it. I'll do my very best to respond to it. All right? Have a fantastic day. Hi, this is Pastor Nick. Thanks for listening. I hope something that you heard today was very helpful. If you want to connect with us further, feel free to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or our website, kanoichurch.org. Sure, I'm glad we're in this together.